Hello and welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today, Rabbi Schneider is going to be teaching us about the hope and blessings that come from God. God wants to bless us right here and right now, which is why he speaks to us through his spirit. But if we aren't tuned in to the spiritual realm, or if we don't heed his voice, we'll miss what he's trying to tell us. And so today, Rabbi Schneider is reminding us that God is good and he's got a good plan for your life. Our message comes from our series on biblical benedictions, and this message starts right now and is titled, The Anointing of hope. A biblical benediction is a declaration from the Word of God of blessing. I believe that going through these portions of Scripture in which we find God's will to bless us will soften our hearts, encourage us, strengthen us, and open us up to live in greater victory and an awareness of the love of God. So, Father, in Yeshua's name, Right now, I ask you through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, that as the word goes forth today, that you would pierce our hearts because we declare that your word is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide a division between the soul and the spirit. So we ask you, King Yeshua, to open our hearts today to receive your word, to be strengthened by it, and to be filled by your spirit in the process. I love that Yeshua said that the words that he spoke are spirit and life. So there's spirit in the word. Remember, Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So the very word of God carries with it an impregnation of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. And so, Father God, once again, we open our hearts, strengthen us, I pray today, in the Word of God by your Spirit. We're going to begin by going to the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse number 13. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but, beloved one, the Word of God abides forever. Once again, a biblical benediction is a declaration of blessing, of the way that God wants to work in our lives. Before I begin and launch right into Romans 15, 13, I'm thinking of a story that might help illustrate this concept of receiving these words, knowing that these words contain the heart of God for you and I. Do you remember the story in the Torah where Moses said to the Lord, he said, show me your glory. The Lord had called Moses to lead Israel out of Egypt towards the promised land. And Moses was really insecure. He really felt very vulnerable. He needed to know that God was with him. So he kept on saying to the Lord, Lord, if I found favor in your sight, he kept on looking for reassurances. And finally, Moses says, after asking for several reassurances, it culminates with Moses asking the father, show me your glory. Show me your glory, God, that I'll know that you're with me and that your grace will be sufficient. So the Lord responds back to Moshe, his Hebrew name, and says, Moses, you can't see the fullness of who I am and live. But I want you to go, Moses, over to the cleft in that rock and call upon my name. And the name that the Lord was referring to there was his sacred memorial name, composed of the four Hebrew letters, yud Vavhe. vav he. It's known as the Tetragrammaton, and most Semitic scholars believe it's pronounced a breathy, Yahweh. Continual present action. The word of God is the great I am. Yahweh carries with it the idea of I am, the living God who's always present, always moving. So Moses goes in the cleft of the rock. He calls upon the name Yahweh. And as he does, what happens? Moses, again, remember, he asked the Lord to show him his glory, but the Lord says, go in the cleft of the rock, call upon my name, and when you call upon my name, you're not going to see my face, but you'll see my back, Moses, and I'm going to make all my goodness, 
all my goodness will pass before you. And so when Moses asked to see God's glory, God said, I'm going to show you my glory by showing you my goodness. And so what we're going to find in these biblical benedictions, beloved ones, is the goodness of God towards you and towards me. Romans 15, 13, hear the word of God. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit. Ruach, breath of God or spirit. Kodesh, holy, the Holy Spirit. So I want to focus in on the key words in this pronouncement of God's favor and blessing, the revelation of his good purpose towards you and I. Listen what the Lord is saying through Paul. Now may the God of hope, so what's the first thing? The God, beloved, that you and I serve, the one that has called us by his own grace through Messiah Yeshua, he is the God of hope. Do you know that now more than ever in my lifetime, humanity needs hope. I shared on another broadcast an incident that happened to me several years ago in the middle of the night in relationship to this concept of hope. And in this vision of the night, I found myself, I was in a church gathering. It was an old-fashioned church. There was about 200 worshipers in the sanctuary. I was just one of the worshipers. And we were all completely united together singing unto the Lord and asking him, we were worshiping him and praising him, all of our hearts towards heaven, our eyes towards heaven, our hands all lifted towards heaven. And as we sung and praised the Lord in this simple old little church, we were asking Jesus to return. The whole body together, unified, calling about him fervently to return. And I realized that the reason that there was such a fervency in this body of believers asking for Messiah to return is because the world had become such a difficult, hard place to live. Now, in this vision of the night, at the same time that I was in the church worshiping with the others, I could also see beloved ones outside the church. I could see what was happening in the streets. I could observe humanity outside the church building. And what I observed was the oppression that was on mankind and the desperation that they were feeling and the lack of hope that they had. And then the Spirit of the Lord communicated to me this. He said, the anointing that you carry. And when he said you to me, it wasn't just me, but it was the 200 of us that were gathered in that church building calling upon Jesus to return. It represented the body of believers, you and I together. And the Lord said to me, the anointing that you carry that has the power to transform those that are on the outside living under oppression, the anointing that you have to transform them is the anointing of hope. People need hope today. They're lost. They're confused. We, we, I mean, people don't know which way to turn. They don't know which way's up and which way's down. They don't know which way's left and which way's right. They don't know if they're a boy or a girl. They don't know right from wrong. There's all this division, all this hatred. People are struggling and they need hope. But you know what? The one that's called us is a God of hope. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi will be right back, so please keep listening. Did you know that you can connect with Rabbi right on your phone? The Rabbi Schneider app is packed with resources, videos, and a daily devotional that are designed to help jumpstart your day. The Rabbi Schneider app is free, bringing you inspiration and encouragement 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Simply search for Rabbi Schneider in your phone's app store and download the app today. We are so thankful for everyone who gives a financial gift of support to this ministry. And perhaps today is the day that you decide that you would like to deepen your commitment to discovering the Jewish Jesus. The best way to do that is to sign up to become a monthly partner at discoveringthejewishjesus.com or you can call us at 800-777-7835. Together, we can help others prepare for Jesus' return. 
And now let's get back into the second half of today's message. Our hope is in him. And so Paul starts out this biblical benediction, now may the God of hope. So we have hope, right? We've got hope that the Lord is presently working in our life today. He is. Even if you're going through a hard time, it's not wasted. God is always working in the lives of his beloved ones. Remember Job? Job was called the most righteous man in all the East. I mean, the suffering and the struggle, the sickness and the death and the misery and the loss of possessions that Job experienced, it wasn't because he was such a terrible sinner. The contrary, the book of Job opens up by calling Job the most righteous man in all the East. No, the suffering came upon him because God was going to do something for him as a result of going through the suffering. So at the end of Job's struggle, at the very end of the book of Job, after he had been going through such tremendous, horrendous pain and difficulty, Job got through it and he said this, Father God, before I had heard about you, I knew you in my mind, but now he said that I've been through all this with you. He said, now I know you. What's the point? The hope that we have is that regardless of whether we're going through a season in life where we're feeling refreshed and blessed, or whether we're going through a season in life where we're discouraged because things are being challenged with relationships or loved ones or our work or whatever it might be, regardless of whether you're going through a season where you're enjoying life or whether you're going through a season where life is difficult, the hope that we have is that the God of hope is working in our lives in all ways and at all times. And the promise is that God causes what? All things to work together for good. Everything that you and I go through, God is gonna cause and is causing to work together for good. We have hope, God's doing something good. We can rejoice by an act of our will because we know that our God is a good God, that he loves us, that he's doing something good right now, and, beloved, things are gonna get better. God's purpose is to bring us into the promised land. He said to Israel when they were in the wilderness going through the trials there, the serpents bit them there. They struggled in the wilderness, 40 years struggling under the heat. And then the Lord said to them, the reason that I did this for you in the book of Deuteronomy and the Torah, was to prepare you for the good thing that I'm bringing you into. The same is true for you and I. God has something good he's bringing us into. And the greatest hope of all, what the scripture calls the blessed hope, is the return of King Jesus, the Messiah, at which time he will wipe every tear from our eyes No more sorrow, suffering, or pain. We're going to be transported and translated into a place called paradise. And so I want you to be encouraged today. Yeah, it might be hard today. Might be a tough day today. But you know what? I want to shake you up to exercise faith in the call on your life and where you're going. We have a God of hope. Paul says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So how do we get filled with hope, joy, and peace? We have to believe. So listen again. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. If we don't believe, we don't have hope. If we don't believe, we won't have joy. If we don't believe, we won't have peace. So we need to recognize that we need to exert our will, come into agreement with the truth, And beloved one, when we come into agreement with the truth that's contained in the written word of God, which I've been proclaiming to you today, when we come into agreement with God's word, hope, joy, and peace, amen, fills our heart. We say, yes, Lord, I might be going through a bad time today, but hallelujah, God, you love me. You're doing something. There's a purpose in this. You're bringing me into something good. You're bringing me into something so much better that nothing could be compared with the temporary trial that I'm going through because of the good thing that you're bringing me into. There's no comparison. It's like Paul said that he considered everything that he lost in his life for following Christ. He said he considered it all rubbish in light of what he was gaining. So we reach out in faith. We bless the Lord today. 
And in doing that, we have peace and joy. Now, it's interesting, and I think it is important for us to consider with our mind that joy and peace are not something that are always, first of all, of an emotional nature. In other words, if we want to have joy, we don't necessarily wait to feel joyful, but rather we make a decision to rejoice. See, the scripture commands us, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. How do I rejoice? By reminding myself, by stirring myself up in the love of God, by coming into agreement with the word of God. I might feel discouraged. I might feel down. I might feel tired. But by reminding myself of even the truths that I'm proclaiming today, all of a sudden joy fills my heart. I begin to rejoice and I'm happy in God. The scripture says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't wait for an emotion to hit him. He didn't wait for someone to come over and pray for him. He didn't wait for his circumstances to change. He was in a really difficult circumstance, but he responded to the difficulty by taking initiative in his will and encouraging himself, the scripture says, in the Lord. And so Paul, once again, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So we wanna choose to come into agreement with the truths that we're declaring today. And then he says, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, of the Holy Spirit. So I want to focus for a moment before we wrap things up here on that word power. Paul says, when you come into agreement with the Word of God through the hope that you have in Him, because He's the God of hope, joy and peace will fill your heart, not first because you feel something, but because you've rather come into an agreement with the truth. And when this happens, he says, you're gonna be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit flows through the Word of God. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So when we come into agreement with the Word of God, the power of God fills us. So the question is today, what will you and I focus on? Where will we allow our attention to drift? Will we be passive and let the enemy direct our mind to this distraction, to that distraction, to this negative thing, to that negative thing? Or will we take possession of our thoughts by faith and by the Word of God, bringing our thoughts into captivity with the truth, making a decision to seize God's Word, to not let the enemy in, and in seizing God's word and keeping the enemy out, we begin to rejoice in hope. And then joy and peace fills our heart and we move out then in the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. So beloved ones, I hope today that you're getting a sense. This is something that is God's desire for you, that you would have joy, that you'd have peace, that you'd walk in power, that you'd have hope. But to experience this, you and I have to do what David did. We have to stir ourselves up in the Lord, shake off the depression, shake off the darkness, get in God's Word, read God's Word, spend time in God's Word every day, Feed yourself on God's word every day because what you feed will grow and what you choke will die. So let's choke the enemy out of our lives. Let's feed on God's word. And as we do, we're gonna be filled with hope, joy, peace, and power in the Holy Spirit. May God continue to richly bless you more than anything you're even expecting today. 
You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and a message from our Bible teacher, Rabbi Schneider. And if you'd like to learn more about these biblical benedictions, then let me invite you to head on over to our website and explore. We have a treasury of books and resources that are straightforward and easy to read, and they're available to you right now. You'll find them online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And you know, each one of us has the special anointing of God flowing through our bodies because the Spirit lives in us and works through us by God's grace. We are anointed to heal and restore people, and that's what this ministry is all about. We want you to truly understand the Old Testament and how the New Testament connects with it. We want to point to Jesus because when you do understand these things, you can be more confident in your faith, and that produces a more giving attitude that will proclaim freedom to the captives who are in need of a hopeful anointing. And it's up to us to stand in the gap to help those who need to hear the good news of Messiah Jesus. So please make sure to join with us through prayer every day and to share more also about how you can financially give to support this ministry. Let's turn our attention back to Rabbi. I want to ask you to think about something carefully with me. That which is born, this is what Yeshua said. He said, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Paul in his writings goes on to talk about the difference between the nature of the flesh versus the nature of the spirit. Now, one of the natures of the flesh is that the flesh, beloved ones, I think we can all identify, is selfish. I mean, for example, when we eat food, do we eat for ourselves or somebody else? The flesh is by nature selfish, whereas the spirit is by nature generous and giving. And if we're not careful, sometimes we can operate as takers in the flesh and not be a blessing to other people. I just want to simply say to you, beloved, we depend on you to continue to reach the world with the gospel. If this ministry is being a blessing to you, I want to ask you to open up your heart in the spirit, be generous, and so financially into the ministry, because we're to support those ministries that are doing good and blessing us. You can give a financial gift of any amount when you visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com or give by text when you type the keyword rabbi to the number 45777. And you can also donate through the Rabbi Schneider app by clicking the donate button on the home screen. And did you know that on the app, you can listen to individual messages and you can also read the daily devotional, catch up on tons of messianic content Content that's designed to take you further in your studies on your own, and you can even sign up to receive text directly from Rabbi. And these resources are just a few of the ways that we make it easy for you to stay up to date and in touch with what's happening here at Discovering the Jewish Jesus. To learn more, visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And now to wrap up today's message titled The Anointing of Hope, here is Rabbi Schneider. The ironic blessing in the book of Numbers chapter six is not a blessing that comes from an impersonal being out there somewhere in the heavens. This special blessing comes from a person, Yahweh, God Almighty, our creator and maker. So receive God's blessing into your life right now. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yair Yahweh Panavelecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panavelecha Veasem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. Shalom. 
I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Be sure to join us again tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider shows us the peace of Christ. That's coming up Wednesday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.